after studying this module you shall be able to know what are executive functions learn how they differ from cognitive abilities identify the role of brain in executive functioning evaluate the assessment procedures for executive functions analyze the nature of cognitive deficits in age related and other psychiatric disorders executive functions remain at the epicenter of human cognition managing our lives involves coordination of various sub processes such as planning judgment execution that primarily depend upon the executive functions of the brain in view of this managerial and administrative quality of the task these functions are purposely termed as executive functions just like an executive of a company who involves himself in planning managing and execution of work the executive functions of the brain also entail in the process of planning problem solving decision making and execution of various activities the entire working of the human body is governed by commands of executive functions the term executive function has been historically used by various psychologists broadly most of the attempts have unified on to refer to area of cognitive processes involved in planning problem solving organizing behavior etc and identification of the related brain areas the role of frontal lobes and other units in the brain was initially recognized by openheim he proposed frontal lobes to be involved in tasks of planning regulating strategy control working memory etc luria further identified three separate units of the brain governing unique activities first limbic and reticular systems controlling the arousal motivation second postrolandic cortical areas governing receiving processing and storing of information third frontal lobes involved with planning monitoring and execution of activities luria related the third unit with performance of executive functions analyzing the increasing importance of the exec executive functions lezak stressed on the fluid nature of these functions and how strongly they governed the cognitive and emotional aspects on the other hand badley propounded the term disexecutive syndrome connoting aberrations in the performance of executive functions problems in planning organizing regulating task shifting fluency inhibition were included as the symptoms of the syndrome in totality most of the thinkers focused on executive functions as governed by the brain areas to be at the nucleus of human cognition and to include various functions of planning management and execution at the epicenter executive functions first meaning like various other cognitive processes executive functions also lack an intuitively concept yet various attempts have been directed towards developing an agreeable definition of the concept Recent attempts have defined executive functions as those indulged in complex cognitions such as concept formation, solving novel question, assimilation, adaptation, developing strategic approach or sequencing complex actions. In another modern review, executive functions are identified as a product of the coordinated operation of various processes to be accomplished a particular goal in a flexible manner these functions are also viewed as playing a critical role in construction and mature cognitions the ability of the individual to hold and manipulate information in mind to be able to act on alternatives rather than pure impulses to exercise self monitoring and to be able to flexibly shift to the changing cognitive tasks fall into the domain of adequate executive functioning in other words working memory inhibition task switching emerge as major components of frontal lobe functions a term used synonymous to executive functions
there are various key components of executive functions such as first working memory it deals with holding information in mind while working on manipulating the information it involves mental activities such as being able to relate one idea to another performing mental maths relating previous information with new learnt information and sequencing the information working memory turns to be extremely important to have a multidimensional view of thought or action critical thinking execute plan and to enhance creativity second inhibitory control it refers to the ability to establish an impulse control and decide on actions based on priority it entails the potential to be able to resist the first impulse which may also be socially inappropriate persistence on the task besides boredom and distraction and to have enhanced selective or sustained attention inhibitory control turns out to be extremely important in order to establish discipline and conduct in behavior social politeness and appropriateness at the same time a control over attention from distraction and impulses third task switching also known as cognitive flexibility it involves the mental shifting of one task to another it is the ability to flexibly shift over perspectives and to adjust to new ones in the process it demands attention to be focused on the new task and at the same time to be defocused from the old task cognitive flexibility emerges as an essential component for critical problem solving and creativity fourth judgment it refers to the individual's ability to critically appraise a set of information the potency to evaluate costs and benefits of an individual at the same time being able to view it in light of past experiences is called judgment evaluating the opportunity cost of an action in relation to self need satisfaction practicality repercussions moral values social pressures risk taking capacity entails the critical act of judgment orientation imagination anticipation prediction all emerge as core cognitive concepts involved in judgment of an action fifth decision making in our everyday lives we spend majority of the time making decisions about almost all spheres such as finance relations work social life etc decision making as a process involves choosing the justifiable options out of various alternatives available to us the process is again directed towards the goal of seeking solution to a problem judgment forms an imperative part of decision making it connotes critical appraisal of events and phenomena influencing opinion formation nevertheless it is a continuous process without involving any cognitive exertion the thin line of difference between decision making and judgment is that former entails making choices whereas latter deals with qualitative evaluation and analysis of stored or received information sixth planning the mature cognitive ability to foresee events and to give them a space time sequence is known as the act of planning the organization of events and its management involve extensive process of planning the simple example of planning could be organizing a birthday party which would involve arranging and managing of events in appropriate time and space planning as a mental act is generally followed with execution which determines the success or failure of planning both planning and execution go hand in hand where planning without execution could be less hazardous than execution without planning which would certainly reflect poor inhibitory control seventh thinking and reasoning the process of cognitive rearrangement and manipulation of events facilitating adaptation to the environment is conceived as thinking 
It is perceived to be a constructive process of creating new schemas with active assimilation and accommodation process. Thinking involves interaction of various other mental activities such as reasoning, problem solving, judgment, abstraction, deduction, etc. Pedestal to thinking is the interface between concepts and ability of reasoning. Concept refers to mental categories representing objects, ideas, abstractions, organisms, etc. The organization of knowledge in hierarchy and system is provided by concepts which are clearly manifested in behavior than explicitly seen. Reasoning on the other hand emerges from logical thinking and inference to seek solution to a problem. Rationalizing events based on stored information, experiences, knowledge, rules encompass goal-directed thinking. Reasoning is broadly of two types, deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning allows drawing of inferences from set of assertions whereas inductive reasoning deals with development of general assumptions based on small evidences. Both types of reasoning are goal directed and are aimed at problem solving. The flexible coordination of the above mentioned sub processes directed to achieve a specific goal is the responsibility of executive control systems. An aberration with such system may totally lead to disjointed, disinhibited and poorly controlled behavior. Coordination, control, flexibility and goal orientation therefore lie at the heart of the concept of executive function. Process The process or actions of executive functions include initiating, regulating, maintaining, terminating etc. It also involves other cognitive abilities such as planning when faced with new settings or situations, forming ideas, storing information in and assessing it from working memory, controlling emotions and thinking abstractly. These functions may follow sub-steps in sequence such as step 1, start. At this step, the individual begins with a question or a problem in mind and aims to devise ways to solve the problem. In order to look for a solution, the individual also resorts to past experiences, values, probabilities, new possibilities, etc. Step 2. Maintain. It deals with continuing the action, regulating and updating the changes. Step 3. Switch. This step marks the person's ability to exhibit cognitive flexibility by switching over the tasks. It entails completion from one task and starting the other one. Step 4. Stop. This step involves termination of task and evaluation of the outcomes. An example to illustrate the process of executive function is to view how to pay a bill. This will involve series of steps such as First, what action to be done? Second, to execute the action, what are the requirements? Third, after arranging for the requirements, when to shift to the next step? Fourth, further, when to move to the subsequent step? Fifth, lastly, to terminate after completion of steps. In the entire range of activities, the feedback about the quality of each step determines the move to the subsequent step and finally the overall evaluation to ascertain the termination of the activity. Certain finer brain actions involved in frontal lobe functions include first generating ideas and converting into action, second beginning with an action, third continuing the action until the step is over, fourth transacting cognitively and physically to start with the next step. Fifth, monitoring and manipulating body actions to adapt with changes and new information along the way. Sixth, devising a policy down to interact with new challenges. Seventh, holding details in the working memory. Eighth, managing and expressing emotions. Ninth, thinking abstractly and critically. Tenth, acknowledging the completion of the task, terminating the action 
and smoothly transacting to the next level or activity. Role of Brain Appropriate executive functioning relies on healthy frontal lobes which are located in the top front of the brain just above the forehead. This part of the brain controls vital functions and exhibits persistent development from adolescence to adulthood. Some of the critical actions of the frontal lobe include controlling body movement, emotional regulation, attention, motivation and other thinking functions such as problem solving, decision making, abstract thinking, critical reasoning, working memory, planning and execution of events. Most of the neuropsychological literature unifies to the view that adequate performance of the executive functions on the neuropsychological diagnostics primarily depend upon the right functioning of the frontal cortex. However, the recent view considers it to be a simplistic explanation and asserts the role of subcortical regions also to play a role in it. Nevertheless, the vitality of the frontal cortex in successful performance of executive functions is so strongly established that many times the term executive functions and frontal lobe functions are used interchangeably. For instance, in case of Parkinson's disease, the neuropsychological tests pose stratal structures anomaly to determine successful functioning of the executive process. The synonymous use of the term executive functions with frontal lobe functions is strongly supported by the robust role of prefrontal cortex as well. This area has particularly been involved in coordination of multifunctions. Hence, damage to this area exhibits cognitive impairments such as intellectual deficits, lack of organization, intellectual deficits, planning, judgment and decision making. It also depicts behavioral deficits like uncontrolled, disjointed behavior and lack of functional unity in the behavior. Such patients generally fail on the subtests of planning, set shifting and fluency. However, they tend to exhibit more than average performance on tests requiring to focus on one specific function. This suggests a deficit in the coordination process and hence a lack of behavioral unity. Recent view also suggests a biological and functional connection between frontal lobe and stratum in governing the executive functions. Cortical stratal circuitry in the brain links frontal cortex to the stratal structures through thalamus and globus pallidus. Various neuropsychological studies pose that stratum plays a role in working of the executive functions. A common example of the same is Parkinson's disease which exhibits symptoms when aberration is just limited to the basal ganglia and also in patients without undergoing any treatment. This suggested basal ganglia corticostratal circuitry to be closely associated with executive functions and also the prefrontal cortex. Cognition difference between executive functions and cognition. There is a thin line of difference that is generally perceived between executive functions and cognition. The term executive function is used as an umbrella concept to include various complex cognitive processes and sub-processes. By and large, various attempts to define executive functions include processes such as inhibitory control, cognitive flexibility, working memory, planning, organizing, etc., which suggests executive functions not to be a single unitary idea. On the other hand, cognition can be perceived as information processing capacity generally controlled by the executive functions. Probably the good way to establish distinction between executive functions and cognitive abilities is to view executive function as a larger domain monitoring regulating the execution of various cognitive abilities. The control over the execution of automatic cognitive abilities lies with the executive functions. To give an example, writing like dictation can be automatic 
but thinking and writing or creative writing all involve attention, set shifting, working memory which are essentially part of larger executive functions. Also cognitive abilities should be understood as an amalgamation of various abilities such as visual motor ability, spatial ability, reading writing ability, abstract reasoning ability, linguistic ability etc. Implicit to each of these abilities would be both executive and non-executive functions giving it a functional unity. Also strong correlation between the various cognitive abilities is attributed to the surfacing of executive functions. Assessment of cognitive deficits. Recent development in the field of neuroimaging has made possible the assessment of neuronal base of executive functions. A robust advantage of the neuroimaging approach is the ability to minutely dissect and discern the area of brain involved and the degree of involvement. Also it has helped to move beyond the simple explanation of frontal lobe involvement to other intricate areas such as prefrontal cortex, basal ganglia and stratum. Another strong advantage of this technique is to be able to distinguish between psychiatric and neurological executive deficits and at the same time also assert the prognosis and possibility of treatment. Conforming to the previous view, neuropsychological data purports executive functions to be closely related to intact functioning of the frontal cortices. Thus, executive dysfunction viewed in various pathologies is more or less attributed to structural or functional frontal anomaly mediated by flexible connecting networks. As a result, the recovery of executive functions due to functional reorganization within executive networks post brain injury also act as a strong evidence of the same time. This relationship has been confirmed by various PET and fMRI scans. However, the establishment of minute prefrontal foci with executive functions has been still inconclusive. Nevertheless, various psychological tests are also used in support to neuroimaging evidences. For instance, Luria Nebraska battery Bender Gestalt test are used to assess specific executive functions. Nature of cognitive deficits in various disorders. In most of the psychiatric disorders, executive dysfunction is caused as a result of frontal lobe damage and striatum lesions. A few deficits which are related to progressive disorders such as dementia, Parkinson's and other psychiatric pathologies such as depression, schizophrenia, etc. Aging and executive functions. Literature reveals depreciation in executive functions as a result of increase in age. On the other hand, in instances of accidents leading to head injury or stroke, sudden deficits in executive functions are more common than progressive whereas in other cases the deficits surface progressively. In case of progressive decline such as Alzheimer's or frontal dementia or a related memory disorder, the executive functions fluctuate. The symptoms may appear few days or it may be just absent for few weeks altogether. Gradually, the symptoms may form a pattern and as age increases, the deficits may become more marked and stable over time. Consequently, the role of caregiver may become stronger with increase in responsibilities especially in the case of self-care and memory deficits. Following are the major deficits that may occur in dementia. First, difficulty in sequencing actions such as picking an object, using it and keeping it back after use. Second, difficulty in set shifting where an individual may have trouble in starting, continuing and closing an action. For instance, in case of eating meal, the person may forget to start and after initiating may be reminded again to eat further and stop once the stomach is full. Third, deficit in working memory 
may surface where the individual may have problem in retaining the information while working upon it. For example, while talking about an event suddenly forgetting and losing track of information. Fourth, difficulty in keeping emotions constant and connected with each other. There may be certain extreme liability of mood and expression. The patient may suddenly depict a strong outburst of emotions, which may at times appear an overreaction to a genuine situation or at times just may be extremely apathetic to an emotional situation. Such kind of extremity may become extremely touchy for the caregiver to handle. In the same view, it may also become a challenge for the patient to control from one own self from giving harsh, rude comments, which may at times also sound illogical. For instance, the get, getting hurt somewhere while walking, the patient may start blaming the objects being kept at wrong places or the light which may be less. The patient may just tend to produce irrational justifications for a behavior. Sixth, such patients may also show a difficulty in following authority, rules and limits. The individual may just not follow the traffic signals or no parking signs while moving on the road. Spontaneous rude comments may be difficult to stop, keeping the authorities surprised for overacting in spite of the plausible fault. Seventh, impulsivity may become strongly evident in everyday behavior. Learning from past experiences and its application in the decision may just not get reflected. An example of the same may be shown in impulsive shopping of things in huge numbers which may just not be used. Eighth, sequencing and turn taking in conversation may also pose a strong challenge. Slow motion in actions and also at times in conversation may become very common. Ninth, self monitoring may be completely absent. The patient may be self blind and not able to see his own mistakes. The realization or correction in mistakes thus may not follow. Tenth, shifting in tasks, ideas, emotions may become most difficult for these patients. It may also seem as if they are struck somewhere and are not able to come out of it. Eleventh, difficulty in planning, organizing a spontaneous response in an unexpected situation is extremely problematic for these patients. For example, to take another route if one is blocked or diverted. Cognitive deficits in schizophrenia and mood disorders. Several attempts have been initiated to understand the cognitive deficits in schizophrenia and mood disorders. However, the findings are still inconclusive. Such deficits may interfere with multiple aspects of functioning such as processing speed, manifested in delay response, slowness in following directions and perceptual organization reflected in failure of visual spatial ability, attention, understanding of number and letters due to their inaccurate processing of shape. A large analysis of literature suggests presence of cognitive deficits both in schizophrenia and mood disorders, though the nature of such impairments may vary qualitatively. Schizophrenia being a psychotic disorder may exhibit intense deficits to an extent that there is a debate for inclusion of these deficits as a core diagnostic indicator in DSM-5. Despite the heterogeneity, there are certain cognitive deficits which are communal to schizophrenia and mood disorders such as decrease in working memory, attention, psychomotor speed, task planning, visual spatial abilities, etc. Summary First, executive functions refer to mature cognition involving concept formation, problem solving, assimilation and adaptation, developing strategic approach or sequencing complex actions. Second, key components of executive functions include inhibitory control, cognitive flexibility, working memory, planning, judgment, reasoning, etc.
Third, the process of executive functioning includes starting with an idea, maintaining and regulating it, switching over to another mental content and finally terminating the action. Fourth, the role of brain is extremely robust in controlling executive functions. Frontal lobe is identified as the key area involved. Recent review suggests role of prefrontal cortex and basal ganglia also in working of the executive functions. Fifth, executive dysfunction may occur as a result of frontal lobe lesions or damage to basal ganglia. As a result, deficits in intellectual ability, coordination, memory, planning may exhibit very clearly. Sixth, executive functions and cognition differ from each other in the way that executive functions act as an umbrella concept including cognitive processes and sub-processes. On the other hand, cognition may be viewed as set of cognitive abilities such as reading, writing ability, linguistic ability, each preserving executive and non-executive functions. Neuroimaging is viewed to be the most reliable assessment procedure for executive functions. The role of frontal lobe and striatum has been well documented in the assessment procedures. Eighth, cognitive deficits may be seen in various disorders, especially disorders related to aging such as dementia, Alzheimer's disease and other psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia, depression and bipolar disorder. The deficits may surface in each of the disorder, however, the magnitude of occurrence may strongly vary.